G'day YouTube, welcome to Stupid, where we do stupid things all day, every day. <laughs> and here is a new stupid to add to the <laughs> Making stupid so stupid, decide. stupider and stupidest. Yeah, okay. Watching stupid things. Sorry. <laughs> so we decided to do a new type of series. We decided to, sorry, we're trying to do a new series for lockdown. Uh, you decided. Yeah, I did, I we did, got roped in. It's called judgment. Lockdown Horror Reacts. We found out tonight that this is happening. No, so we're doing. We were. We were. Hey, let's let's get together and film today, guys. And then tonight, I got. What do you have for us? Tell the audience you did. So we're doing scariest movie moments of all time. Oh, so we're doing scary movie moments of all time. Well. Uh, yeah. Are you guys ready for this? Uh, this is by Cinefix. The, okay. the channel Cinefix. So it's credit five to them. Moments I don't want to see. I don't want to see Exorcist head turning around. I don't want to see. Ragdoll, the summoning of the Shadow Man. Yeah. I don't want to see. La Llorona? Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't want to see nothing by no dolls. I don't There must be, be no dolls. I don't want to see movie, movie 43 because that was a bad movie. <laughs> and. Goosebumps. No. No, no Poltergeist. Oh, yeah. Poltergeist yeah. ruined my life. Okay, so I shall we get into it, discuss it afterwards, see what movies we agree with and what movies we don't. No, also, I hope, douche. and let's see if we even all get scared. Stuff will be. This isn't really a horror <laughs> challenge. It's just scariest movie moments of all time. This is, let, this is you guys, let's, let's see what challenge. let's see what actually scares us the most. Try not scream challenge. Yeah, basically the scream challenges. challenges. Yeah, we. Go. There's nothing that makes you want to sleep with the lights on more than a good old-fashioned scary movie. But how does that work? To figure it out, we took a look at some of these uh. scenes that did it best. These are our picks for the seven scariest moments of all time. Hey. Ah. Whoa. What's Picking this off at number seven, let's get it out of the way. The jump scare. People complain a lot about jump scares. No. And horror that's films. the worst and one. These people are to jump be believed scares. jump scares are played out, but we don't think that's true. We think that bad jump scares are played out, mostly because the audience is way, way ahead of the filmmakers. We oh, see those hiding spots so a bad. mile away. <gasps> but filmmakers who can keep ahead of expectations, oh. who can put jump scares where we least expect them, that's what we love. It says to us, on some deep subconscious mm. level, that place you thought Freaking you were safe, nice. yeah, there's danger there too. Think Insidious's from behind a head. <laughs> Thirteenths from in the water, the rings from beyond a cut, the descent uh, uh, carries uh, below ground, the fellowship of the rings right in front of us, and even the cabin in the woods. Dude, that be such a fright of life. However, for our number seven, we've got to give it to Jaws. It's coming, you almost don't know it's Ooh. coming. And sure, the sound Ooh, helps shocks off, but the real genius here is that Jaws sneaks around our expectations by not even letting us think it's a horror movie. It's a horror in disguise, a low-key horror that doesn't have any of the surface signifiers to warn us to keep our guards up. So we sit back, relax, and spend our time watching it like an action film, or a disaster yeah. film, or maybe yeah. even a thriller. But we're yeah. not sniffing out jump scares, yeah. so when one does emerge, it's all the better for it. No, man, not Next twice. up at number six, we're moving from surprise to suspense. And where the jump scare hits us where we don't see it coming, the suspense scare hits us where we do. Well, almost do. Suspense is really just fear of the unknown, anxiety about uh, the future. Uh. You take your protagonist, you confront them with the terrifyingly deadly outcome, and then inject a little ambiguity into the mix. Hey, it's hey, the closet hey. in Halloween, it's the bathtub in Lady Diabolique, the hallway in Nosferatu, yeah, the basement in Silence of the Lands, and the ending of Wreck. And while those all make Dude, us what the hell is that? The drawers, we think that Whoa. Zodiac takes the wet drawer kick. This really? tip is how you got it in your head. Okay, these are spinsful. That Rick is the Zodiac. That in the poster. Is this about the Zodiac killer? Um, probably. Yeah. No, it is. The poster that Rick drew. Well, the that handwriting you know. is the closest that we have ever come to a match. Rick didn't draw any posters. No, he drew this one. Mr. Graysmith, I do the posters myself. It's my handwriting. Something gonna come out. I don't, I don't remember this. I won't. I won't take any more of your time. Why don't I just go and find out when we play that film? I feel like but something's that's gonna all right. happen. That's alright. It's not a problem. They're just down in the basement. I feel like something's gonna happen. Not many people have basements in California. I do. 
Zodiac devotes its entire plot up to this <sighs> point, building up a terrifying that was good. Yo, that was damn good, good skin. clues that might identify him. And then when all of a sudden Bob Vaughn starts ticking all the clue boxes, we can't help but recall that terrifying reputation he now might possess. While Fincher is, as always, pitch perfect in his execution of the scene, building the suspense into a fever pitch of terror through camera and editing and audio, we think the reason it's so effective is that while we might be yelling, don't go down there, you idiot, at the yeah. screen, he's not an idiot. He's not walking down there without any sense, but in spite of his sense. His character is just as afraid as us, but his decision to press onward is completely in keeping with who he is, curious and obsessive to a fault. And the best part? Despite the distinct probability of getting super murdered, we're so curious that we want to get <laughs> murdered too. At number five, we've got a twist on suspense that takes it one step further. It's not the suspense that hey, comes from hey. knowing something bad might happen, uh, oh. but the dread that comes from just kind of suspecting that it might. It's a feeling, not a thought. Oh it's a visceral uneasiness, a nameless no, please, anxiety, not a please. conscious objection. Our emotions are telling us uh. to feel suspense, but our intellects got no reason to confirm it. And in stark contrast to the surprise of the jump scare, this succeeds on oh, being gonna have familiar. Something, it's usually the something the dude. That's imagine something. Not that's not the story okay. itself. It's the imperceptible okay. and inexplicable. I keep thinking something's gonna happen. Whoa! It's holding uh, uh, you are good thinking it's gonna happen. It's meta <laughs> understanding that the filmmakers have got to do something bad sometime soon. It's right before we meet Leatherface in Texas Chainsaw Massacre. It's the first kill in Jaws. It's most of the entirety of the Blair Witch Project. Yeah. It's the hospital scene in Exorcist 3. It's every part in a movie where the horror strings swell for no goddamn reason other than that's what they do. Yeah, yeah. Our favorite yeah. version yeah. This might just be the diner scene from Mulholland Drive. So, you came to see if he's out there. To get rid of this god awful feeling. I've heard of this movie, I don't. I don't... Right then. This scene is such a perfect example because while we're feeling it, watching it, Patrick Fischler's character is feeling it, living it. And there's perhaps no one better at executing it than David Lynch. He sets us up with a brilliantly detailed story of a dream, the illogical, emotional terror of it, and then prods us through it, giving us no reason to fear anything except that we do. With the reverby sound, creeping drone, and lingering POV camera, he gives us subtle emotional cues to feel uneasy, exactly like the memory of a dream might. So when the jump scare at the end confirms our nonsensical no. fears, it turns our whole world upside down. No, please, man. <laughs> Moving forward to number four, we're turning away from I have the coldest of shivers down my body, my heart. There was no scream. That's our scream. They're warning us that I should tell you guys what's going to happen. The world perversion of the human body. There's something intrusive. Uh, this is, you know, when, when you know it's fake, it's not scary. Human form horrifying. Yeah. It's the reason for the uncanny. Holy shit. Worse than death. Awaking. Oh, the fly. It plays on our basic fear of mutilation, reveals our repressed denial of the fallibility of our body. It's the distorted figure, like oh in Jacob's Ladder, The Others, Safe, and The Dark Crystal. It's torture porn, like Eyes Without a Yo, Face, did you Martyrs, watch the Misery, dark crystal? Human Centipede. It's body horror, like American Werewolf in London, The Thing, Tetsuo, Eraserhead, Video Drone, and Pinocchio. That's right, Pinocchio. But for yeah. our number four pick, we think it's gotta be the demonic perversion of a little girl from the- I Earth. knew it! I said I did it! Right? Oh, I don't like the, the walking sorry, down the, the staircase. No! 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 I don't like this. I don't like this at all. I don't like this at all. Because it's not as much the form of the human body that's distorted, but it's movement. And it doesn't just pick the old victim. A devil with red skin and horns. That we can deal with. But a little girl in No! 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 Horrifyingly strange. No, please, wrong. please, no, it's no, really wrong. And it's no, hard to watch. No, this is exactly no, why we want you to watch it. The human like form it. isn't the only thing that these can do. It's also just as effective to pervert the human psyche. This time, your character is even oh, more dude, familiar. Yeah, but something about should. the way they act is just off. This movie is really suspicious. It's eeriness. It's the chilling sensation of stranger danger. Think the beach from Under the Skin. Yeah, the end really of Psycho. The kitty 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 from Audition. It's Frank from Blue Velvet. The pedophile from Gone Baby Gone. And that goddamn air conditioner that ruined my childhood from The Brave Little Toaster. They're all terrifying, twisted psyches and innocent looking packages, things we've deeply repressed as part of our everyday socialization. And the scariest of them all, the death drive. 
If Freud is to be believed, the death drive is a compulsion towards self-destruction. It is repressed, subverted, converted, defeated. So when we see someone enact this self-destruction directly upon themselves, it's the absolute worst. Now we too might be the oh, monster by the Oh, the scene is crazy. I don't want to look at it. Because it's someone murder, no? No, yeah, which you, which you, breaks open our face. Mm, ooh, ooh, like Hellraiser, or Antichrist, or Mirrors, or the cool. Omen, or again with the Exorcist. They shock us in a way little else can. But if there's an award for most scarring of the bunch, it has to go to Cache. But before it no. does, this is a serious spoiler for an incredible okay. film and an immensely disturbing sight. So proceed with caution. Proceed with caution. <laughs> I'm caution. I'm so caution. So caution right I'm gonna be leading it to you the whole time. Qu'est-ce qui se passe? Merci d'être venu. Entre. <coughs> My eyes Illuminati confirmed. <laughs> wah, wah, wah. I got a flex. What's that? 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 Death just comes so suddenly. This wow. is a spine-chilling expression of immense pain, a disturbing reminder of the fragility of life, a psychological Ugh. jump scare. It is grotesque Ugh. of the body, it is grotesque of the mind, it is danger from where we least expected it, and it's absolutely horrifying. There's no fancy camera work, no unknown outcome, no streaking score, just a man and his terrible pain, way too close for comfort. Closing in at number two, there's a certain kind of scare that besets upon us from all what sides. And not just the protagonist as a proxy, but seemingly us, oh. the viewers themselves. Oh. In contrast to oh. the jump scare where it's over in an instant, or the no, various forms of suspense that toy with the idea that something bad <laughs> might happen, no, this man. kind of scare puts us right in the middle of that bad thing happening right now and leaves us there. The shower sequence from Psycho is the perfect prototype. We are being stabbed over and over. Annihilation is approaching from all sides. Wherever the camera turns, there's a knife, and it's not just the characters in the story that are assaulting us, the editing and the music are almost literally cutting into our experience. It's horrifying. However, for our number two pick, we're even more impressed by the ending of Nicholas Rogue's Don't Look Now. It's okay. It's okay. Oh my goodness, it's okay. And a friend. It's simultaneously a physical annihilation and a psychological. There's a realization embedded in his dying thoughts, a realization that destroys his former worldview. But even as the montage gives us logic and story, it's more than the effect of it. The cutting is assaulting us with all kinds of frightening imagery, evocative imagery. It's a violent rush of imagery. It attacks us as we watch it. The church bells assault us as we listen. There's little time dedicated here to the surprise and the suspense of it, and more to the abject horror of death. And that's what this sequence is, a cinematic interpretation of the experience of death, a final descent of the symbolic into bloody madness. Those guys are saying a lot of stuff that I don't know what saying. There's so much stuff I never thought I was scared of. At the core of, of all this, yeah, of all of this suspense and surprise and terror and horror and piercing violins and flashing frames is one thing. Death. Literally or symbolically, each of these scares confronts us. Shut with up. Death. A fourth time they're going to do it. The fallibility of our defense oh, is in the face no. of it. And where our number two assaulted us with the cataclysmic violence that of death, our number one tries to overwhelm us with something even worse. The not The utter now. hopelessness and emptiness and bleakness and suffocation and meaninglessness of the void. And we won't beat around the bush here. Although there are moments in Donnie Darko where we sneak a feel of this, and we think Kubrick also manages a pretty dreadful sense of doom at the end of 2001, our number one pick has to be from The Shining. Yes, Danny! <laughs> it sounds quiet now. Oh, yeah, it's quiet. Yeah, it's quiet. It's so quiet. Yeah. 
Or do you at peace at the moment? Oh, I don't like the I don't like the twins. I don't like the twins. Oh, oh, I no, 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 I don't like this. No, I don't like the twins. It is rolling death. It is overwhelming our senses. It is inescapable. Like, we are like immobile the in the face of it. It is intercut with flashes of danger, flashes of terror in its face, but with no sound. We are powerless hey, to even stop in the face of the hypnotizing drone. It is slow and simple and quiet and completely abstract. We are not really afraid of drowning in a molasses speed tsunami of blood, but something about it just contains the feeling of existential dread in the best possible way, so that we can't help but experience our entire Anyways. self being swallowed up by the inevitability of death, oh. which is why we think it's one of the scariest moments of all time. So, what do you think? Do you disagree with any of our Woo! I don't like the jump scare fueling your nightmares? Let us know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe nice. for more Cinefix movies. That was, nice that was more depressing than scary. Oh, my chest. Okay. <sighs> so, uh, what do you guys think? I'm kind of, I'm kind of depressed at the moment. Chad, wake up. Chad, wake up. Chad, wake up. It's over. What do you guys think? So what for you was the scariest moment? Oh, Jaws? No, Jaws was just like a jump scare. Uh, Jaws was a jump scare. Jaws gives you like I think fight. The Shining is still creepy though. Like it still feels creepy. I actually mentally blocked that movie out of my head when I was a yeah. child. I, I couldn't comprehend it. But what are we scared of? So are we scared of blood? Like are you scared of jump scares? What, what frightens you the Exorcist. most? Exorcist. Dude, that is still that, that holds the, up. I think that, that, that the up, body was explaining that the body manipulation. That, you see the that's distorting and the you get the jump, constant jump, jump, yeah, yeah, which you get so, like, like you get uh, what do you call them? Acrobats? They can do uh, that. Contortions. Contortions. Yeah. They can do that. I mean, it's not. You know what I mean? So that's not. I don't feel like that's not bad. Like, you know what? For me, it's the mutilation. Like when that whammon does that with the oh, like like when you but, like but when you but when you know jaw. it's but when you know it's fake. Do you know what the worst was? The worst one was the suicide at the end. That came so quickly. Dude, I don't know. I, I didn't just, see so that. I didn't know. The guy coming. cut his neck. Just he's talking. And, yeah, and he's like, like, I got a present for you. Boom. Oh, why? Like, <laughs> like yeah. Like, like you see, like we yeah, are. Like, like the way the guy responded was I'm so kind of, appropriate. I'm not like. Oh, oh, I'm kind of depressed yeah, at the moment. <laughs> It was like so yeah. appropriate. Like, what do you do in that situation? Because he must have thought, like, no, this my arms is like, like numb. Yeah. Like, like you like you're, in my, in my hips and right in my now. chest. I don't feel great. Oh. I don't, I don't feel great. Um, oh. If you scary. didn't enjoy that video, you could. Like, that was too much horror. That was way too much horror. That was a bit too much. It was like. It was, but the, do you know I what? This wasn't like this wasn't like right cheap now. final destination type. Who scary moment? It's yeah. like psychological horror. Yeah, this was all so psychological horror. So psychological. Because that was like my childhood growing up. You know, all the stuff like my family they didn't was show like which project, man. both they? on horror they stories. They did. They like showed a little clip of it, oh, but okay. not like an actual. You know, this one of the scariest horror stories, the cat man. Oh, yeah. Well, my my aunt TV was like animals. convinced. No, man. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. I appreciate it. No, 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 I really no, 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 do. But uh, but no um uh it was my 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 aunt said she saw him leap over the wall. Was he on drugs? You know, like you're not supposed to talk about him, like the cat man, like a kind of a candy man kind of a buzz. Mm. Like this is just talking about. He's like freaking Voldemort kind of name. Mm. And she, she was explaining his hands are like blades and he wears like a like black legend. velvet kind of pants. Yeah, and it's mm. like jumps, it's velvet pants, pants. Like on. Uh, and you know it's creepy, you know? That night, these three men dressed in white came to my grandmother's door, and they were like, um, there's some kind of weird Bible, this Bible all in white. They were telling us to like follow it and stuff to my aunt, to my aunt. And my, my grandmother came out of the room and she saw it. She ran to the front of the door and she burnt the underneath of the Bible, and these guys bolted, and one guy just flooped over the wall like a a beast. Boop, bam. How do you sleep? You don't sleep. You sit next to your cousin and you watch movies and you laugh. <laughs> and you put it in a vault. And that kind of rubbish that we just watch unlocks vaults. Yeah. yeah. Vaults that I can So find. when you go home and you see, when you switch off the light and when you see that the man, man standing come in the to door, your frame, door that silhouette, now you know what you what? need. I have a window. <laughs> what if I'm lying you on have a and it's a window what, to a balcony? What if I, and I see a man standing on the balcony, a silhouette by the wind, by the balcony window standing with a little white bag? And I'm just and I'm looking through, and there's a silhouette of a man. And, and if you don't have, you remember a, that oh guy? My. You remember that guy slit his throat? Oh my goodness! Oh my 
this is the one that you went to a dark place. <laughs> it was so dark. I hope you guys enjoyed. We didn't. <sighs> didn't. Man, I'm depressed. I am so scared right now. I'm like, <laughs> like legit. Like Tingles. Messed up. Tingles. Yeah, yo, I don't <laughs> know. There's still oh, more to come. The feeling. Right? The feeling like the here. Feeling. Like the here, feeling. but like in here. The feeling, because oh. that's where the heart is. Yeah, but like, like a round nose. Like trying to get in. It's like trying to get in. Like, comment, subscribe. Please.